What's up, everybody? My name is Paula Rubio, aka GN. Welcome to the Aperture Fight Focus podcast. If you've watched this far, thank you. Uh, but listen, this is going to be a long podcast. It's going to be a detailed podcast, but it's going to be a very important podcast with a real subject matter expert. We're going to cover a whole lot of things here, but the gist of it is, I believe, it has something to do with how big your muscles are and how uh, much harder you can punch with them. Look, I'm going to be learning right along with you. Okay. I'm not an expert in this stuff, but luckily we have coach Rage Ng here, who is a certified strength and conditioning coach. He is a boxing coach, uh, an MMA coach. He is the coach's coach. Um, so here's what I'll ask. If you're watching up to this far first of all thank you if you haven't liked and subscribed on the channel yet please do take a moment to do that we try to bring you some really interesting subject matter experts that will hopefully mean you get to be a better fighter and for that we're going to need your attention okay so without further ado i'd like to bring in my homeboy coach uh rage ing what's up my brother how are you today i am awesome thank you for having me Yes, sir. Now, look, you warned me before this started that this is going to get quite detailed, that you spoke professionally and you spoke in a lecture setting about this stuff. And, you know, we are on the Internet. Uh, uh, <laughs> attention spans aren't as, uh, um, let's say, expansive and uh, connected as they should be with uh, us trying to attempt a subject matter like this. Yeah. Uh, but I want to give you the stage. I want to do uh, just a little bit of talking and ask some questions. Uh, but first, I want to ask you always, what inspired you to send me a text and say, hey, we need to do a podcast about this. This, this crap is important. Um, it, it was uh, a video and commentary and comments. Um, so every now and then we come across what is presented as an axiom it's presented as though this is just the way it is and it gets handed down from generation to generation and it persists um so in this this video the video was about i believe it was about punching power and the uh, the presenter made a comment something to the effect that big muscles don't make you punch hard or, you know, it's not about building big muscles to punch hard, something like that. And, and he even prefaced it with a comment like, I can't believe people don't know this already. Um, so then there, there was <laughs> commentary about like, oh, well, we, we hit with our bones. We don't hit with muscles, blah, 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 blah. And then just the, the reaffirmation of something that's wrong it's just wrong um, gotcha and this isn't the first so, time it's happened in martial arts and fighting this is common right right, right. because look i've seen videos you know jujitsu guy versus um uh weight lifter and weight yeah. yeah body the bodybuilder always loses right and right. all of those videos the bodybuilder always loses and we are left with the conclusion that yeah muscles don't mean crap right 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 because it's right. set up that way and 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 it's this self-fulfilling prophecy um so actually i hate to do this to you but maybe we could jump out of order with some sure. of the slides right sure yeah so i i sent you five or six fighters who are yes. known for their power punching okay who do you want to begin with I don't want to say their names. Just put the pictures up, and we should be able to go through. And that guy, that guy looks pretty muscular. That guy has some pretty big muscles. I, I think he's kind of a power puncher. Yeah, who is this yes? guy? I, I, he looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about this so guy? We... That that looks like pretty big muscles to me. Right. Pretty big muscles again. Oh, this guy's got the biggest ones. Right. Okay. Okay. 
So you, you sent you sent me some athlete. You sent me some like javelin stuff. Uh, we're, maybe we're we'll get to yet. that later. We're not there yet. <laughs> oh, right. See, this is what I'm telling you guys. Pay attention, right? If you can't watch it now, watch it later. Bookmark it. Do whatever you need to do. We're about to drop some knowledge. I'm and, saying, and I'm saying we actually, like I'm involved. <laughs> this is Mike Tyson as a youngster. This picture mm -hmm. is he's probably 19 or 20 in this picture. Uh, but throughout his career, he got bigger and bigger and, and, and trained with, uh, I think it was Lee Haney, professional bodybuilder to get more muscular and you know, is probably the most famous knockout artist that, uh, that we have. So, uh, so to say that big muscles don't mean anything and bigger muscles don't equal harder punches to say it as an absolute and to say it factually is, is wrong. This is a nuanced subject because here's the thing. Muscle size is a correlating factor, but it's not the only factor. There's all there's, there's myriad factors that determine athletic power. So, uh, when, when it was taught to me, so that muscle size is strongly, strongly correlated to strength production, to strength. Okay. Right? Yeah. So bigger muscles generally almost always are stronger muscles. Now, I have wait, to say, wait, wait, oh, can, can, it, okay, you say that. Mm -hmm. In a way that leads me to think that um, there's an alternative. Yes. Or there's bigger muscles that aren't stronger muscles. Yes. Is that accurate? Okay. That, that, is, that is true, especially when we get into relativity of relative strength, of strength compared between athletes. And uh, so relative muscle size, a bodybuilder is going to have larger muscles, but is not going to be as strong as a power lifter. Uh, right. I get it. I get okay. it. So, uh, but, uh, but bodybuilders are strong. They are crazy strong because they got a whole lot of muscle. They're just not the ultimate expression to the nth degree of strength. Okay. Everything comes back to the said principle S A I D specific adaptations to imposed demands so specific means, adaptations to imposed demands all right write that down guys i love that specific said. adaptations to imposed demands dissect it for me uh look i i, I in in short yeah it's it's an evolutionary adaptation to the thing that you do you get better right? at it the more you do it it's a, right so what right? do you not get better at the Anything things you, you don't, don't do. do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? So, oh, okay. Yay. So your body adapts specifically to the demands that you impose upon it. And this is a principle and it, it's, uh, it's overarching pretty much everything when it comes to physiology and exercise sciences. So it's a very, very important principle. Okay. So, um, when it was taught to me, it was taught to me in a language that there are paradigms of strength, that strength is the body's ability to force, to, to produce force and power is a paradigm of strength. Endurance is a paradigm of strength. Um, the problem that I have with that is when you look up the word paradigm, there's five or six different definitions and none of them are quite saying what, what it is. It is specific, accurate, precise language and it's right. But I just don't think it's very good because <laughs> most people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? What does that even mean? What is a paradigm and what's a paradigm of strength? So. Yeah. Power, what is a paradigm of strength? Right. Power to use less scientific and less 
accurate language, power is an expression or a type of strength. Okay. With you. Okay. So power, strength and power are highly correlated. Now there's another term that we're going to be throwing out and using, uh, and it's a, it's a mathematic term because, uh, I have a strong education in biomechanics. So we're going to use the language, uh, and it's function of. So a while back I, I posted anatomy as a function of gravity and I was just putting it out there because it's, this is an axiom that was taught to me. And I was surprised some people freak the fuck out because it's not what they were taught and what they were taught was wrong. And I was changing it. Uh, they were taught that anatomy is a result of gravity. And that was true until about the early 1960s. And then we were like, Oh, wait a second. Anatomy is a function of gravity. So if something is a function of something else, if you change one thing, you change the other thing. So anatomy is a function of gravity. If you change gravity, anatomy will change. Understood. So what happened in the 1960s that we were able to witness a change of gravity on the human body space space yeah. exploration space travel so yeah. that the astronauts would go out and then they come back and they would lose bone density and they would lose muscle mass their anatomy would change because their anatomy adapted to the lesser gravity and they would have a hard time coming back to to earth right now that's that's if you believe in space travel and you know <laughs> I happen to believe in it, uh, but there are some people that don't. Um, so anatomy is a function of gravity. And I wanted to say that power is a function of strength, but it isn't. What does that imply? What does that mean? Yeah, if power is not a function of strength, if the function changes, then so should the other. Correct. Man, so I hope that, you guys are following along with me. Uh, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Hey, Keep I think you're. I think you're doing great. <laughs> so, if power were a function of strength, anytime you increased strength, you would increase power. Anytime you decrease strength, you would decrease power. That's not the case. Can you give us like a real world example that might illuminate this point for us? Okay. So what is strength? I mean, you're at really asking a lot out of me right now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still trying to find, I'm still even just to be honest, I'm, I'm trying to delineate strength from power in my yeah. mind. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that out. So, so let's start with, with strength. I mean, I, I go to, I mean, when you think about strength, I, I, I think of things like skill, you know, like I'm strong in mathematics. Okay. Maybe, okay. I, maybe I'm strong. Uh, okay. So that, that is one definite use of English, but let's specifically talk about athleticism. Right. Skeletal so, muscular strength. Okay, can I say like my my strength is in kicking over punching? Nope. No. Okay, so that's, that's not skill. that's not that's skill. So right. when we're talking so that... about strength, we're talking about things like weightlifting, right? We're talking okay. about so it's the body's ability to generate force. How about to displace force or to to displace energy? Man, okay, I'm just going to let you talk because I, I have so many questions. Every time you say something, I have a hundred questions in my head, awesome. but, I, but I'm not, no, I'm not representative no, of awesome. people.
people That's out awesome. there, right? Some people so, would be like, Paula, you're too slow. Let them speak. So no, 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 no. If, if listen, we're working at your rate. This is your podcast, and they're lucky to be here. That's how I, I appreciate I see that. It. All yeah. right. Well, then help me understand the difference okay. between strength and power and well, and so strength is the body's ability to produce force. Got it. What is what is force? Can I get a lifeline from some of the viewers out there? What is for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, what is, guys, what is force? I mean, I'm, is there a formula? Is it like mass equals blah, yes, blah, blah, blue? Yes, yes, yes. So what, that, what, 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 that, we, that would be 100% correct and 70% useless. <laughs> 100% mass times acceleration, Facebook that user. Is, there you go. Mass times acceleration. That is Thank force. you. What's your How name? The, What's your name, buddy? Let me know because it's just showing up as Facebook user, but I appreciate that. Okay? Yes. There you go. F equals MA. Okay. What is F equal force equals mass times acceleration mass times acceleration. Okay. How you, how useful is that to, to anyone that hasn't taken physics, even for people that have taken physics, let's, let's yeah. be honest, right? How, how useful is that? So that is the formula that is 100% correct. Is there a, an, a simpler way that we can think of it or break it down I, i'm thinking of like pushing a car or or pulling uh you know those strongman competitions that's what i'm so thinking a about. force is a push or a pull yo yo man i'm a pretty good student bro <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty good i'm pretty good okay i'm getting it i'm getting there you it go so that's okay so the strength is the body's ability to push or pull got it that's yeah. strength so then what's power? Oh. Let me, let me, uh, let's go to our, our other photos, right? The let's... javelin throwers. Oh, oh man. Ray, these are, these thank are. Thank you for being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> this is These great. are some of the most powerful athletes on the planet. Javelin throwers? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I would say that's a pretty big muscle for a chick. Oh, I hope <laughs> I'm not offending anybody with my... Bro, you're going to get me canceled. My, yeah, Instead. right? <laughs> uh, no, for, for a female athlete, right? Um, those those hamstrings, those quads, those buys and tries, those delts, I mean, she's pretty jacked. Yeah. I think, right? Let's uh, take another look. Next guy. Okay. Again, powerful, powerful. Strong. And then we got one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's guiding that javelin or whatever it is with his yeah. mind. Okay. Uh, hey, like hey, what a, does said stand for again? Um, specific adaptation to impose demand. So this is the specific adaptation, what we're seeing here, her hamstring. And yep. this is the specific demand. Is one of throwing. them, one of them, one of them, right? Because right, it, it's a myriad, it's a whole comprehensive right. training program. Sure. But this is this is the biggest demand or the most important demand that they this is their event, right? Right. Um, and then there's one more picture of 2017. Uh there we go, better. World champion. Oh, look so, at those. delts, <laughs> lats, biceps, triceps. So it, this is a muscular dude. Now, he's not muscular compared to a linebacker, compared to uh, a bodybuilder, maybe even compared to a power lifter. But he's muscular compared to a large section of athletes and what m many martial artists would consider muscular, right? Yes. So, so if I'm showing you a picture of one of the most powerful athletes and strength and power are, are highly correlated, but not the same. Uh, 
Oh, Facebook user, a uh, friend of ours, what is the formula for power? What is, what is the formula? Oh, power equals E. What's what that? What's T? <laughs> effort over time. Okay. F okay. Uh, power equals effort over time. So that's not what I was looking for. What I was looking for is force. In my head, power would include mass, muscle acceleration, structure, and technique. Okay. So uh, the formula I was looking for, which uh, that is one formula, effort over time. Uh, force times distance divided by time. Force times dis force times distance divided by time is that is athletic power is power. Oh, so force. Is, what's another word if we're simplifying and talking about the human body? Another word for force is what? I don't know. Strength. Give it to me. Strength. Oh, right, right. Strength is the body's ability to generate force. So strength times distance divided by time. So power is strength with a time component. One more, one more time for those taking notes and for me to sink this in my brain. Power is strength with a time component. Oh, gotcha. So the uh, quintessential definition of absolute strength or, or uh, proxy for absolute strength is powerlifting. And powerlifting is a misnomer because there's no power in powerlifting. It's all absolute strength lifting. But I didn't name the sport. Uh, so absolute strength lifting sounds so much cooler. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's <laughs> three strength lifting. Three big right. lifts. Three big lifts in powerlifting. And they unilaterally are used as a proxy for an indicator of absolute strength in the industry of, of uh, strength and conditioning. Now, other people have their own, but it's, it's pretty common. So you got uh, the squat, the deadlift, and the bench press. Those are called the big three. And you put on as much weight as you can, and you move it through the range of motion. As long as it's a clean lift and you lock out the joints and cover the range of motion that's acceptable within the rule set, it doesn't, the time is not, you're not timed. You're not competing how fast you move the weight or how far you throw the weight. Okay, so there's there's not a time component. You take as much time as you need to to generate the strength that you need to to move the tonnage. That's strength. Power is about milliseconds. Rate of force production. So there's two components. There's force and there's the amount of time needed to generate that force. So you can keep force constant and take less time to generate that force. And eventually it, it will and that increase its power. Right. Or you can keep time constant and increase the amount of strength that you generate in that time and you increase power. Ideally, you want to decrease the amount of time and increase the amount of force to right. increase power. Okay, so if we think about the javelin, head to toe is involved in generating kinetic energy. You first start running, <laughs> right? Then you come and use from one side contralateral to the other side. So from the, the foot of the lead leg to the wrist of the rear arm, full extension, full rotation. Most javelin throwers fall on their face after they throw the javelin. But it's concentrating all that energy into the one or two milliseconds of 
release. Release. And then the javelin itself is the indicator of power generated. It's the simplest unit. It's the simplest measuring tool we have. The more power you generate, the farther the fucking thing goes. Now there is there is some <laughs> angle and trajectory stuff that that can mess up. You can generate. You can have a bad angle or bad trajectory. Sure. Yeah. And have a lot of power, mm -hmm. but not a lot of distance. So there is there is some skill and technique there too. But as far as easy to see, like okay yeah she threw it further she's more powerful <laughs> hey I got, a, I got i got a quick question since we're you know we're i'm um, watching the olympics and this yeah. is happening now um let's compare the javelin throw to the hammer throw uh, um in terms of where the the value of a technique over power because it, it based on what i've been hearing so far uh and this might be contentious but since you're generating rotational force yep. and using the weight of the hammer itself, yep. that's more reliant upon you know technique than it is strength. Uh, no, actually, uh, because the uh, amount of eccentric strength that is needed to resist and counteract the centrifugal force of the hammer, yeah, that's... the hammer thrower actually re they're usually much bigger and right. stronger athletes. Wow. I, I was but, wrong, but they're different. They're different mechanisms of, of generating power. It's full rotational inertia and centrifugal force, uh, versus right. lateral or, uh, linear movement and, uh, and full body flexion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, but throwing athletes are extremely powerful, right? No one would ever say not not anyone that's educated in any 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 of this shit would never say that that hammer throwers aren't powerful. They are, right. and they're big and they're strong, and they're highly technical. Um, it's just the javelin is the classic example of power, and I think it's a little bit easier just to. Whoop, there it is, you know, to see that. Um, because of the the spinny spinny with the shot put and the discus, and not everybody uses the same technique with the shot put, but yeah, throwing throwing athletics or throwing sports in general are are power sports, true power. Right? Understood. So, yeah. Okay. So strength is highly correlated to power, but power is not a function of strength. It's an expression of strength. You can increase your strength and not change your power. So you can double your bench press, but not change the rate of force development in your skill. And this is where a, a base understanding of this, that's where we can get into this rabbit hole where we begin to believe things that aren't necessarily true. Right. Or that are true sometimes or that are true when you see a, this guy do it or you see that guy do it. Right. Oh, right. Listen, a bodybuilder that has no skill, fighting, throwing punches, you can't throw, I mean, you can throw a punch, but the skill of throwing a punch has to be developed. So it's, it's ridiculous and, and, and disingenuous to compare trained and untrained. And that's where this myth of bigger muscles don't mean harder punches. That's where that myth comes from. It's like, okay, untrained, untrained, it doesn't matter what your athleticism is. However, untrained versus untrained, the more athletic person is going to hit harder. So you're comparing untrained to trained and then saying, ha ha, he's got big muscles, but it doesn't right. mean anything. Trained 
with big muscles, with a well-programmed, laid out, well-scheduled uh, uh, strength, speed, power program that is able to convert absolute strength to power by increasing rate of force production, that's the game. That's what we're here to do. Okay. Hey, I'm going to break this down into uh, my level just for a second. Yeah, yeah. Just for a second for the, you know, internet argument uh, forum guys like myself. Um, so when whenever we see like a, a viral video of a jujitsu guy absolutely mauling a bodybuilder, yeah. a sound argument might be, well, let me go train that bodybuilder in jujitsu and let's have a rematch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and then... And then and, the, it'll illuminate what how important that power is. This is going to trigger some people. Striking is a power sport. Jiu-jitsu is a strength endurance sport. Wrestling is an absolute strength sport. Now, that doesn't mean there's no power in jiu-jitsu. That doesn't mean there's no power in wrestling. That doesn't mean there's no endurance in boxing or striking. But speed kills in striking. Well, there's no speed without power. Jiu-jitsu, I got my ass kicked by someone using lazy jiu-jitsu. Fuck you, Mike. Um, <laughs> Mike? Who do you think you are, Mike? <laughs> Was he a smaller dude, too, and everything? Uh, yeah, yeah, significantly oh, smaller. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Rage. You don't reveal these things on a live podcast, bro. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so, um, strength the strength paradigm is much more suited to jujitsu than the power paradigm. Mm. So the bodybuilders are actually really, really well equipped to do jujitsu if mm. they had the skill. And if you look at like, uh, we don't have pictures, but if you look at uh, Ryan Gordon, uh, any of the, the top competitors, oh. they're, Oh yeah. They're jacked, jacked man. Yeah, absolutely right. They're jacked. Yeah. yeah. There's another yeah. dude that was jacked. Yeah, I think he faced Gordon in the finals of like a, a recent combat jujitsu match. But it was just like yeah. two jacked dudes with incredible yeah. jujitsu yeah. skills. That's who's yeah. going to be in the finals. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. So incredible. Um, okay. So I think. In, in my mind, when I was talking about this, I was like, well, I think it's really important to, to get into muscle cell anatomy, to explain what's happening. What the fuck? Right? <laughs> so, because honestly, all right, let's go. <laughs> Boom. Is it this, are we starting with this one? We Is are this, starting with this one. Okay. Let's okay. get rid of some of these elements here so we can get a better look. Okay. What's up? All right. So muscle, fascia, muscle, muscle fibers, blood vessels, sarcomere, yeah. myofibril, uh, meiosis, wow. actin. Not bad. Not what bad. is this stuff? So uh, to our viewers, first – this is just going to be like a quick overview to give you some idea, but I, I encourage you to actually take advantage of modern technology and and go learn this stuff on YouTube. There are oh, there oh. are incredible 3D animated learning tools, and it's so much easier to learn from a 3D animation than a, a 2D cave painting that I had to learn from. Back when I was learning this shit, what, what were you saying? Medical. First of all, medical animations are incredible. Yeah. Uh, and and I just want to remind people that, hey, if you go on Facebook and you look up a group called Aperture Fight Forum, Rage is our resident admin there. And man, I wish you'd charge people to be on this forum. And we got a very <laughs> high concentration of just not just, you know, um, well experienced, but really smart people in that forum. It's still a martial arts forum, you know, so you'll be like, hey, what's the best kick? Uh, you'll get those <laughs> once in a while. 
But uh, Aperture Fight Forum, uh, make sure to answer the entry questions appropriately and correctly. And welcome to the we discuss this stuff from time to time. And when we do, man, it, it, it's in depth. Usually yeah. I step back and I, I let the pros kind of handle it and I'll throw in sort of a half joking question that will incite like a, a divergence in the conversation that it, it'll enrich the whole thing. Shout out Aperture Forum, all the members. Rage is, a, is an incredible admin. Um, what we can talk about that later. We have cool. a, a, a medical um, yeah, illustration a little, here. A little uh, cartoon. <laughs> so if we take a look, basically what this is representing is that when you, it's a cross section of a muscle that uh, then it, it kind of pulls out little fibers and little tubes and, and each segment to the right of the muscle is a smaller grouping until it comes all the way down, all the way to the, to the right, uh, of the actin and myosin, which is at the, the cellular level. So muscles are kind of bundles of stuff. And I, I, it's important to understand that it's not, it's not all just the contractile meat. Uh, so if we look at muscle fibers and then next to it blood vessels the muscle fibers that they're showing are a bundle of cells of muscle cells and over here the sarcomere that is what is the contractile now uh very often you're going to come across sarco and you're going to come across myo and sarco means flesh, myo means muscle. So a lot of this is just Greek and Latin names for, for stuff. So um, sarcomers are the contractile tissue. So over here, uh, actin and myosin, they do what's called cross bridging. And they kind of, uh, kind of like, finger walk <laughs> uh against each other to cause the muscular contraction let's try another slide <clears throat> moving on to the next slide. we got oh what there we go oh this looks like a close-up of uh there the stuff go. that was going on around here yeah so this this the first one just kind of laid it out like oh if you pull this section out and then this section then this section and this one also i think gives a a little bit better view uh you know we've got the humerus over here with uh you know the the pec major anyway um so what i think is important to explain to people is that there are different components of muscle with different properties and different purposes and we think of muscles almost exclusively as contractile tissue. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we think of muscles almost exclusively as contractile tissue. But if we look at this picture and look at the pink and the white and the other stuff that isn't red, all that other stuff also has a function. So the contractile tissue cells can get bigger. So the sarcomeres, right? The sarcomeres will hypertrophy. And hypertrophy is just a fancy word for getting bigger on a cellular level. Uh, but the industry jargon when, when uh, strength guys talk about hypertrophy we're almost always talking about muscular hypertrophy but really anything that has cells can hypertrophy and hypertrophy means get bigger atrophy means get smaller so when the contractile tissues hypertrophy 
strength potential increases. Strength is strongly, highly correlated to power. So it's highly likely that when muscle size increases, power has the ability to increase. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrapped, wrapped around. Let's go to another slide. Yep. Hold on. Give me one second here. The other slide. Oh, we're getting deep. There we go. Here we go. Okay. So, Jeez, uh, bro. yeah. And I, I used to know oh, the Z bands and the, the nuclei, the mitochondria, the terminal cisterni. I what I just like because cisterni is fun to say. Um, cisterni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to cisterni. All right. <laughs> and that's the Ooh. other thing that's kind of funny is like cells have like genetic, generic, uh, oh, ectoplasms and blah, blah, blah. And we have specific plasms or uh, sarcomeres or, you know, it's sarcolemma that is just specific to muscle, but it's all the same shit. It's all cell structure. Um, what's important is what's called in this slide is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So you got muscle fibers and they run end to end and they connect at the Z bands and they're innervated by motor neurons and they are the contractive tissue. They are the thing that actually contracts and generates force. The sarcoplasmic reticulum wraps around bundles of uh, muscle fibers and is full of plasm, sarcoplasm, and is responsible for nutrient nutrient and waste exchange so it's a, it's a highly important part of the muscle that is not contractile ah uh, okay how how does it grow in relation to the fibers itself and how can we maintain the health of this uh, what appears to be the electricity and the plumbing of the yes. house yes specific adaptations to imposed demands your body will adapt uh. absolutely specifically and appropriately to the stimulus that you provide it but the adaptation will be different based on training so someone like a bodybuilder will have huge sarcomeric hypertrophy large amounts of sarcomeric but also extremely large amounts of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So both the, the contractile meat, both contractile and non-contractile are getting bigger. Go. <laughs> is it is it is it then possible to disproportionately grow these muscle fibers while the uh, important plumbing stuff doesn't grow appropriate to uh, or relative to the growth of the muscle fibers itself. And what does that result in? Yes. It results in big muscles without a lot of power or without the ability to generate strength. Uh, what, 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 how, how do we take care of, of these like cool blue and purple guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it seems and really important. These are important and these are, are deep questions. Um, it, it all comes back to appropriate scheduling uh, program design is, is the key here. Um, and, and honestly, I, I don't think we should get much deeper into yeah. that. Right. Uh, yeah. And this is a good place to say, don't, do not, do not, if you are a fighter, a coach, <clears throat> more than a casual fan don't listen to the commentary don't listen to commentary don't listen to what commentators say um so he bulked up too much yeah uh, he's slowing down like all that stuff that we so hear these commentators there was, say there was a 
Don't listen to Jiu-Jitsu that. world champion competing in the UFC, and I don't remember his name, but DC was doing commentary. And mm-hmm. Jiu-Jitsu guy gassed out both by getting beat up and then got choked out by somebody who was barely even ranked in jiu-jitsu but mm-hmm. it's mma and he got beat up but then he also fatigued extremely fast and extremely early and dc was on the mic going it's the wrong kind of muscle he's got the wrong kind of muscle Uh, what, what No, it was the specificity of training. Oh, damn, bro. Yeah. The specificity of training was wrong. He was spending too much time in the right. strength endurance paradigm and too much time in jujitsu work. And, and he's a jujitsu world da, 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 20 years of his training. Right. But it's the muscle that we can see. I, I, I right? can almost understand. I can almost understand where that comes from because, hey, look, man, uh, I mean, I study this stuff nowhere near the level of you. And even I find myself making ignorant statements from time to time. And, and these commentators, they have to. They have to sell the fight. They got to sell the action. Um, yeah. But, and they're not they're not going to pull up a slide. DC is not going to pull up a slide and go, right, hey, this guy's right. tra- training regimen didn't, uh, you know. Right. Wasn't, but I mean, yeah. he, do- he doesn't even have that depth of okay. knowledge to, to do that <laughs> in the first way he doesn't um and don't listen to joe rogan you can maybe listen to joe rogan about some some marketing ideas but other than that and, just and don't trends. listen to him yeah right so psychedelics <laughs> and uh maybe some political and but, ancient civilizations and his yeah, correlation to yeah yeah i got it okay so um now wow. ah i i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it just do it. Here we go. Now, bigger muscles almost always mean more strength. And so you've got contractile tissue that can hypertrophy. You have the sarcoplasm, the, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. You have uh, non contractile tissues that can and will hypertrophy. And you have intramuscular fat now fats primary job is to store energy but what happens when the body starts specifically adapting to performance uh based on mechanoreceptors and the influence of extreme loads the force of muscular contraction upon the fat cells triggers hypertrophy in the fat cells. So fat gets triggered to grow by mechanical force. A fat cell gets bigger because you put more fat in it. And then the force of the fat then forces the fat to grow. Right. That's usually, and that's usually done calorically. Uh, but so there you've got body fat or uh, subcutaneous or interstitial uh, body fat. And then you have intramuscular body fat. And something that happens in athletes is their body fat, their subcutaneous body fat decreases. And the body has a propensity to store fat in the muscles. Think of guys like uh, Mark Hunt, Tai Tuivasa, and the yeah, guys who much- don't look like they're muscular, but you're yeah. saying, "Oh, dude!" So they have energy stored within. They, it's and it's a mechanical advantage. So, um, damn, muscles are connected to bone via tendons so tendons connect muscle to bone and that's like the anatomy 101 yeah right here nice tendon that's the the anatomy 101 way of saying it which leads to some misconceptions because then you're like thinking like you got popsicle sticks rubber bands and duct tape and and tendons are the duct tape between the popsicle stick and the rubber band but these are organic we're organic everything grows 
from one to the other. So muscles turn into tendon or grow into tendon that then grows into bone. Does that make sense? Yeah. I it's, have some tendon damage on my finger right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, okay, well, are there finger muscles? There's got to be. There are finger muscles, but they're down there in the forearm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what? Anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole Jeez. What? what? So, Go okay. On. There's something called a force angle. Right? So, a force is a push or a pull. And now you are pushing a car, right? Yeah. And if you push perpendicular to the flat surface on the car in the direction that you want to go, all of your force is then moving the car. Right. It's transferred based on the angle that you're pushing from. Right. Uh, based so that's on called a force the angle. An optimal force angle is 90 degrees perpendicular. But okay, I don't... if I have an acute force angle and I'm pushing on that car, I'm going to be pushing up and not forward. I'll be pushing slightly forward, but a lot of my energy is going to be wasted pushing up. Or if I'm obtuse, then a oh. lot of my energy will be pushing the car down and lost as right. far as not e right? even even if the surface contact is a tire it won't transfer i mean if it's, we were pushing a rock i can see that I, that's a more well, like so then, pushing you know, a rock I mean, on sand the tire will compress the suspension the springs will compress right but it's right. wasted it's wasted energy yes any, okay. anything right so 90 degrees is optimal so why is that important Let's go back to our picture of the tendon. Tendon and picture that, coming. Yeah, this might not be the best, but yeah, come back to me. <laughs> Forget this tendon. Yeah. All right, what's up? Bones are levers. Joints are axes of rotation. And tendons are connecting that are transmitting force and pulling. So this pen right here, this is a lever. Where my fingers are, that's the axis of rotation. This finger is the tendon. Now, if it were 90 degrees, then all the force is then transferred perfectly to the lever that I'm trying to move. But almost never, but rarely, rarely is there ever a 90 degree force angle of a tendon to a bone. Sometimes it happens like in the bicep and the hamstring at the knee and the elbow. Uh, but the optimal 90 degree force angle happens only for a moment. And that's an engineering joke for Mike who choked me out and the two other guys that have. So anyway, sorry. Um, I'm going to laugh like I got it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's oh, a joke engineers. about moment arms and, uh, <laughs> Engineers will get it and probably not even think it's funny. Um, okay, so here's the thing. The closer I can get this tendon to 90 degrees, the more efficient my force transfer is going to be because I want a 90-degree force angle to transfer the force efficiently. But most of the time, the muscle is going to be an acute, right? So if my fist is the muscle, right? So picture the bicep and this is the forearm and the bicep is this big, right? Does that make sense? No. Not to me, but it might to somebody else. Okay, so. There we go. Right, bicep tendon right here, attaching to the forearm mm -hmm. bicep, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see that there is an angle represented by this finger. Okay. Yes? Yep, I'm with you. What happens to that angle when my bicep gets bigger it it changes the angle it increases of... the angle and brings that angle closer to 90 closer to or 90 closer... so that is called improving mechanical oh, advantage dude okay man all right all right 
you can increase intramuscular fat and get stronger because you change the mechanics of the muscle. Mm. Wow. You can increase sarcoplasm and you can increase sarcomeres, sarcomeres. So Whoa. bigger often means stronger because it's improved muscle mechanics, more contractile tissue. And now, <laughs> why am I saying most of the time, sometimes, why isn't it always? Why because isn't it because always? it's fighting, right? Because there are other variables in it's play. not just fighting, it's it's bodybuilding, it's weight training, it's mm. right. So why isn't it always correlating that when you make shit bigger, you increase force production? Uh, because the force necessary uh needs to be relative to the specific uh, application okay and so you, you can you can absolutely make your bicep bigger and not have a stronger punch because you are just not punching let's not let's not talk about punching yet okay okay you can make uh, the muscle bigger yep but not stronger hmm. well i gave you all these reasons why the muscle is stronger there's other factors right now hold your arm out this way mm, out this way right and then bend your arm and do the strongman pose there you go how did that happen how did this happen how'd that happen uh i listened to you my brain told me to comply your your, your brain told you your brain so it started in your brain started my brain yeah yeah so yeah. what happens between the brain and the muscle uh electric impulses and communication between this via, communication system via, and this communication via through um, through these uh wiring which th are through called, the wiring called called i don't know cns central nervous system central nervous system motor neurons okay so okay. there's a neurological whoa and a cerebral component whoa so and they aren't worked out the same way as muscles and so you're telling me that all <laughs> i'm gonna upset some some forum members uh, <laughs> you're telling me that there is a, a potential for far transfer benefit based on my working out of my central nervous system to strengthen the communication pathways or the efficiency between i don't i don't know if i would call it far transfer i would just call it transfer transfer yeah so all of these like brain games in con you can't just do brain games right you can't just do brain because these all need to be developed uh congruent to so the task there's research what the hell where there's research where you had groups of people Group one lifted weights. Group two visualized lifting weights. Group three lifted weights and then visualized, and visualized lifting the weights. And group four did jack shit. Group four was the control and yeah. they actually got weaker. The group that lifted weights was stronger than the group that visualized lifting weights. But the group that but, only visualized lifting weights increased their strength X percent. I don't quote me on this. I'm remembering 17%, but I 17%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not gonna quote you. That's a lot, seems. Okay. Well, the weight training was was 13%, or I'm sorry, 30%. Uh, and I forget the the duration and the specifics of the study. And of course the athletes or the participants who both did the physical work and the visualization had the biggest strength gains. Now My other God. research, other research has been done where the bar speed is constant, but the brain is shouting faster, faster, faster. 
the load is the same the rate of travel is the same the group who had the brain command of faster 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 got both stronger and more powerful well this is really incredible and 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 forgive me for for drawing um some hasty conclusions here but it seems to me that the science of fighting can uh is is uh complementary to the philosophies of martial arts um in a yep. in a in a more uh uh real way than i have ever been led to believe i've always yep. seen the value of martial arts training you know like meditating under waterfalls and visualizing and all yes. this stuff yes. yes and i never discounted the purpose and value of doing the work but you know you're, where you're, there's I, a study where yeah th this harmonizes to create optimal results you know what the future is going to look like that's amazing i mean but tell me i think it's going to look a lot like the past i think so too people are gonna fucking but i think so a lot of we will look at stuff old tra tma traditional martial arts and traditional martial arts long chain reactive pa 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 and it's like that'll wow, never work right? you can't do that in time but but, 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 but our wow, right? mental conditioning our mental training is minuscule there, there are you know shout out to kevin seaman there are people that are, are shout out moving uh this region and also hey matthias narducci and todd fossey um they are moving mental training forward but we have only barely even scratch the surface of, of what is to come and, and what is available of rediscovering i think right if you if you think about what you just said and it's yeah, gonna look a lot right? like the past it's a rediscovery it's a restoration of yeah. these old methods um and, and congruent and to this, we, the science people, we have we today. are making huge improve <laughs> oh, man i love you bro <laughs> we we are making big improvements in athletic training specific to combat sports and i mean there's a small group of us because the industry as a whole is still garbage um which is cool for me hey <laughs> but uh okay can i now, can i make one quick point go, just hold go, that go. thought right yeah if we think about the george st pierre's yeah the anderson silvas yes the israel idasanyas Maybe. Right, so we're, we're, we're maybe <laughs> but what I was trying to get at is you know is is past, near future, and yes, and, and, and yes. immediate, right? Is and and you see some of how you know Canelo does these these brain activities, yep, right? It's it's not as if uh, it isn't this philosophy, this idea isn't producing results in the real world because it absolutely is, right? But why? Absolutely why are we so slow as an industry to harmonize these two seemingly contrasting philosophies and worlds and would much rather argue about which is better i don't know did i lose it's crazy you? okay no right, no started, no yeah. um wow i i i don't know i don't know i mean i the you know that's I, what gravitated me towards you to begin with right <laughs> I, I visited black house mma and i thought it was just gonna be a bunch of meatheads and then dude who like okay looked like a meathead with, <laughs> vi with viking beard and <laughs> talking philosophy and he starts talking you know uh, a kind of depth and an appreciation for for the martial arts that i was not expecting that's yeah. what gravitated me to you and then you drop yeah. all this science shit yeah and it's like wait a minute we should stop arguing you know we should just be uh, we can have discussions right but with this yeah, foundation I mean, of what can yeah. i learn from you yeah. instead of what and, can i choose where you invest your time amen you know? you know move forward move forward learn more right on. um yeah okay lomachenko yeah somebody uh emmanuel uh yeah yeah sure sure yeah absolutely absolutely yeah um so right on do bigger muscles mean harder punches assuming that it's a trained athlete yeah probably 
That's right. So, okay. So we, we were starting to get into, you can make a muscle bigger and increase its strength. You can make a muscle bigger, but not train the nervous system appropriately to increase the strength, right? So if you compare a bodybuilder to a power lifter, a bodybuilder will have the bigger muscles, but the power lifter will be much, much, much stronger. And then the Olympic lifter, who is th literally throwing the weight and getting under it, is more powerful. Does this all make sense? It all makes sense. I love where this conversation went. It took an hour and five minutes, but I think every step of the way uh, for, for me, bro, it was like, it was, uh, it was climactic in, <laughs> in, in, the, in the strongest sense of the word. And, uh, and that's a little bit of the traditional martial arts philosophy in that we didn't want to just give you the answer. I'm right? sure you, I'm sure rage you could have done this in five minutes probably I don't one I don't think I I don't think I could have but <laughs> oh, someone could have this could have been a TikTok right this could have been a TikTok video right? 30 seconds get to the same yeah conclusion. I mean I we could have we could have said bigger, bigger bigger muscles mean harder punches no not always but most of the time yes right, right. okay that's no, we, that's the one minute TikTok version um so Strength is highly correlated to power, and power is a function of hitting hard. Bro. So strength is correlated, strongly correlated to hitting hard. You you need to make like a, a diagram or something yeah. of your of your own. Like you draw, I don't know if you can draw. I don't know if you can draw. <laughs> but but if you but if you gave me like some chicken scratch, maybe I can find somebody who can who can make it like you know look like this, <laughs> yeah, look like this go. somehow. But hey, man, how'd that feel for you? Like I I I have this sense of we got there. Yeah. Um, and we I usually, hope we usually do. We, we usually, usually do. Right? We do. We usually do. I love this path that we take. I love our process. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, there's going to be one person out there where this is this is going to be everything to them. And you know, um I'm I'm I, I, after the fact I'm going to chop it up. I'm going to isolate that one little piece and lead them back to the full conversation. Um I'm going to give them, you know, the 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 direct shortcut path without all the scenic views. But I'm really going to push this idea that, like, hey, you need to re listen to this whole conversation, um, dude. That was amazing. Yeah. How do you feel? Thanks. How do you? And and this is like I said, like you you used to lecture on this stuff, right? Right. So, do you feel satisfied I, enough that you got your point across? Tell me. I where think you're I at. got my point across. You did. So, strength is highly correlated to power. Power is a function of hitting hard. Timing is a function of power. And that's going to be our next discussion. <laughs> but look, folks, listen up, listen up, listen up. Maybe, maybe this is all you ever see of rage. And you think, you think this guy is all theory. This guy is just digging too deep and he's mitochondrial about it. Uh, but you were a fight. You are a fighter. But you, uh, when I say were, I meant like you yeah, did some I, I bare did compete, knuckle yeah. shit. You did yeah. compete. You train high level. You train athletes at the highest yep. level of this competition. Yes. Yes. Not only do you have the scientific uh, brain and the analytical mind, you convert it into shit athletes do on the yeah. fucking mats. Yeah, actually, and this is what's important. The right? the science and lecturing is actually my weaker skill set. My my strength is coaching, training. Hell yeah, used to be fighting, um, but I'm 50 <laughs> now and I don't, I can't compete anymore. But <laughs> wow, there's got to um, be a way. <laughs> but listen, I, I think I think this is important. This is an important. Uh, because there's a lot of like, hey, well, the mitochondrial and blah, 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 therefore. Right. 
and and there's there's often a disconnect between the stuff that comes out of laboratories and the stuff that happens on the mats and in the cage unilaterally right? unilaterally not just not just in in combat sports in sure all athletics there's a a rift between the eggheads right. and the meatheads absolutely big rift between the science guys and huge the working guys hey can i talk um, to you about fma just for a second as well go. Go. There is that rift that exists in Filipino martial arts where you have the highly technical, historical, cultural, um, get this form right, and they can't fight for shit, okay. right? And then there are the other guys who are like smashy, smashy. They beat dudes up who are, you know, scholars. But when you combine these two things, you, you have somebody with an analytical mind and who can dissect tactics, look at their own performances, and make these micro adjustments to, uh, to uh, create better performances downstream and understand yeah. culture, history, science. Yeah. That's what you want to look for. Yeah. And, and you're that kind of coach, bro. You Thanks. are absolutely <laughs> that kind of coach. You are a friggin' nerd. You yep. are a scientist, yep. right? But you're a meathead and you yes. smash dudes to pieces. Yes. Yes. That's the kind of coach N that you want. Knuckle, knuckle dragging scholars, as uh, as Troop says, uh, Blake Troop. That's his term. Knuckle dragging scholars. Yeah, that's, that's a dope. That's a dope term. <laughs> that's a dope term. Shout out Blake Troop, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the the thing to do is to understand to get one's own ego in check and understand that we are moving. A, a a an art a lineage a thing we're, we're we're it's we're part of it and we're we're here for a short time and we are here to contribute to it yes so i i do think the history is important i do think the art is yes. important all of it is very very important and yes, we can sir. only play our own individual roles but it's better to be cooperative that's right. It's better to be the actor director. It's better to be the <laughs> player coach. It's better to be the student teacher because yeah. you get the perspective and, and you can be a better teacher when you know what the student has to go through. You can be a better coach when you know what the fighter has to go through. You can't make unreasonable demands because you haven't gone through it. And this is the value yeah. of you. This yeah. is the value of you as a coach. And this is why, again, from the first moment I met you, I was like, this is the dude I'm, I'm, I'm going to see again. And you know, I travel and I meet a lot of people, but I, I met you and I'm like, I'm going to meet this guy again. We're going to do some stuff. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you month, for this. Next month, we're going to do some stuff too. Dude, we are going, Rage and I are going to be in Minnesota together. There's a, a, a Todd Fossey guy involved at <laughs> who's, who's, and a, who's and a Greg Nelson guy. guy. And a Greg Nelson guy and the Minnesota yeah. Martial Arts Academy yeah. and the champions that they've raised in that. Uh, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, have you met Coach Greg Nelson before? Never. He's Never. a... Never. Which is crazy because I I trained with Eric Paulson. And, yeah, right? And they're like Eric buddies. And, and yeah, they're... they're oh, best buds. They predate the existence of CSW, their, their relationship together. Yeah. So it's crazy that I've i've never met them but or never met greg but that's gonna know. be exciting i'm gonna bring gonna my be, camera yeah, it's gonna be awesome we're, we're gonna make some content and uh but yeah listen i want to thank you very much for this look every time you ask me um uh hey would you do a podcast about this i always say yes but i'm and i never really prepare right i never i, I like i didn't do any research to make sure that i under that right. i can understand right the stuff that comes out of your mouth <laughs> <laughs> because i like and, and, i like our and, process and my preparation is to roll back on the shit that comes out of my mouth right because <laughs> it's like these are these are all rabbit holes and and yes. if you're still with us i i encourage you to start your own rabbit hole process yeah you and know? i want to thank you i want to thank you for being this wasn't an easy one to follow by no, any means right no. like especially considering what is popular out there as far as you know fight podcasts are concerned right uh this is kind of a different offering you yeah. know so kind of a different if offering. i can s summarize yes please the size of muscle is correlated to strength production but there's more to it than that uh strength and power are correlated but they are not completely one is not the function of another 
you can increase strength without affecting power. You can increase strength and decrease power. You can, they, they are separate entities or expressions of the same paradigm based on neurological input and specificity of training. Strength and power are extremely highly correlated. Power is a function of hitting hard and hitting hard is a function, or I'm sorry, timing is a function of speed, power, and hitting hard. So if I hit harder, my timing changes. <clears throat> if I hit faster, my timing changes. If I hit more powerfully, my timing changes. People talk about timing as, a, oh, timing is the most important thing. Yeah, what are you talking about? But we'll get it. That's going to be our next I topic. know. I was about to say, That's we gonna be to our do next a topic. podcast about timing. Right? And it's, but you see how everything is connected. And if you don't yeah. understand things, at least on a rudimentary level, you're going to make some stupid statements. You're going to make some big mistakes. You're going to, like, man. So, and I mean, th those stupid statements are okay as long as you you have the open mindedness and the willingness to, to take learn from them, and correct them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, rage, my man. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, this won't be our last podcast. We will probably be doing a podcast when we're in Minnesota together with Greg Nelson and Todd Fossey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you again in person, my friend. This will really solidify our, our, our second meeting together. I love where our journey has taken us so far. We met at Black House and we saw the Aperture. Aperture um, Super Seminar in Las Vegas. Now yeah. we're going to meet. But we, yeah. didn't, we didn't really get to spend too much time there at the That's seminar. That's true. That's true. Uh, but here we're going to get to chill. And yeah. you're gonna, I'm going to try to stab you and you're going to show me why. All that all that's bullshit um, okay <laughs> and we're gonna have a lot of fun together i i just want to say uh i appreciate you man you're like our only actually i think it's between you todd fossey and coach greg nelson you're like the only multiple guests i've ever had so oh and i wow. and, and i like that cool that's that's really dope all I'm right rage. Bub. <laughs> <laughs> rage thanks for your time bro thanks for your thank time. you thank all right. you all right, till next um, time. All right, peace, brother. Woo! Damn. Listen, guys. Um, I like to keep it real. You know, um, I've been having some uh, some makers mark throughout this conversation. Kind of helps me get in the flow. But listen, um, I understand this podcast ain't for everybody, um, but I sure hope that there's a handful of you out there uh, who can really appreciate this stuff. Um, you know, man, martial arts has been around forever and it's, it's undergone these, these evolutions and transitions, but we ought to be grateful for the time that we're living in and we ought to be grateful for the abundance of information and inspiration that we have so readily available to us and you're only doing yourself a disservice by closing off these pathways to learning and information. And yes, this was a podcast that was an hour and 20 minutes long. And I'm sure you'd much rather watch a five minute clip of it. And I'm probably going to create those. But for those who are willing to stick it through and to watch this whole thing and to pick up the nuances I just got to say, that's probably an extension of how you navigate through the martial arts. And that's probably an extension of how you navigate through life. And thank you for giving us, myself and Rage, the opportunity um, uh, to present um, my questions and his thoughts to you. Thank you for learning right along with me. I think that's super dope. I am not an expert. I'm not a subject matter expert about anything. I do love learning. And I feel like, you know, as a as a professional dabbler in the martial arts, I think I represent probably the biggest cross section of martial artists out there. And that's just folks who are, uh, who love it and are trying to figure it out. Uh, and so I'm going to try my best to bring you as, as many people like rage and of course, rage, the rage, um, again. And I hope you appreciate that. If you do, uh, 
just hit that like button, maybe subscribe. I don't know. Um, this is all just, I mean, if I, if I were to get philosophical here for a second, this is just thoughts and information. It's just data that's floating in the ether. And I appreciate those who have the correct uh, receivers to be able to collect what we're throwing out there. So I appreciate you all. Thank you very much for watching Aperture Fight Focused. And until next time, my name is Gian. Thank you guys very much for joining us. All right. Peace.